Good morning, viewers. My name is Imran. I'm a UK and international tax specialist. Today, I'm here with another interesting video. In this video, I will explain to you how you can calculate income tax liability for an individual in the UK. So, I will explain to you with illustration and example, and it will make it very easy for you to understand the topic. Uh, this topic is highly useful for ACCA, ACA, and CTA students, also useful for graduate studying accountancy and finance, um, and also in the UK, and also useful for the beginner interested in the UK taxation. It's good to know the layout for the calculation. It makes the student life easy. They can take over the question in a short time. And the examiner can track the student answer in a much better way so that you can get more marks. This is a pro forma for income tax calculation to make sure you place non-saving income in one column and then you place saving income in the second column and the third column you add dividend income. So a non-saving income, so if individual is an employee, he must receiving wages um, and then if individual is sole trader, he will have trading income. So both are non saving income. Property income is also non saving income. Any foreign income in the form of wages or rental income should be also placed in the non saving uh, box or non saving column. Same, uh, so any interest income from deposit in the bank should be placed in the saving column. So dividend income will be placed in the dividend column. Um, there's reason for this. Um, if you wish to know more, I have uploaded a video on how the taxation of interest income work in the UK and also I have videos on how the taxation of dividend income work because there are different rates. There are some allowances based on that. We placing them in, in separate boxes to make the student life very easy. And then at the end, don't forget to deduct any personal allowance available. What is foreign income? How you can deal with this one? Foreign income could be in the form of rent um, from a property abroad. It could be interest income on deposit held in a bank or seas. It could be dividend income on shares in a foreign company. Entry could therefore be made in non-saving income, um, sorry, non-saving column and the interest column and in the dividend column. For example, if it's a non-saving income, put them in the non-saving column. If they have interest income, put them in the saving column. If they have dividend income, put them or place them in dividend column. Deductible payment. Income from all sources added together. Deducted, deductible payments are deducted from non-saving income first. For example, if individual is entitled for deduction, so they can claim deduction on their self-assessment. Uh, if there is insufficient non-saving income, such payment can be deducted from interest and then from dividend uh, income. So the total income less deductible payment give you net income. And then also do not forget to deduct personal allowance. So the personal allowance for 2022-23 um, is 12,570. Here is an example. Jalal, an individual, has the following income and expenses for 2022. 23, so he got a salary uh, of 25,000, private medical insurance of 5,000, rent from his London flat um, 10,000, rent from his flat in France 5,000. He got he got allowable expenses of 2,000. So based on the information, all is non-saving income. So calculate taxable income for July. So in this case, we need to do income from employment, property income foreign income so all of them are non saving income so there's no saving income or dividend income so there well, there's no need for you to create um, a separate column um, total income less deductible payment 2000 that give you net income of 43000 less personal allowance of 12570 it's give you a taxable income so based on the result Jalal is paying tax at the basic rate because the basic rate limit is 37,770 for 2022 and 23. So this will be taxed at 20%. So that is just a basic example. Also note that each individual, as we said on the previous slide, that each individual is entitled to a personal allowance of 
12,570. However, this person allowance is will reduce if an individual adjusted net income goes over 100,000. So in, in this one, if you say is Jalal has adjusted income of 110,000, so Jalal person allowance will reduce because his adjusted net income is of 100,000. So remember the rule is if you're adjusted or if in, an individual adjusted net income goes or 100,000 for each two pound increase in net income or 100,000, the person allowance will reduce by one pound. So the, in this case, Jalal net income is 10,000 more than the threshold. So the threshold is 100,000. So Jalal net income is 110,000. So Jalal net income is 10,000 more than the threshold. So you, what you need to do is simply the 10,000 divided by two. So Jalal person allowance will reduce by 5,000. So the person allowance is 12,570 reduced by 5,000. So Jalal will be entitled to a person allowance of only 7,570. Three main tax rates apply to non semi income in 2022 23. So the basic rate is 20%, higher rate is 40%, additional rate is 45%. An individual with a taxable income under 37,700 will be taxed at 20%. And then an individual in excess of 37,700 after person allowance will be taxed at 40% which is the higher rate. So 40% uh, tax applies to an income between 37,700 till 150,000. An income in excess of 150,000, the rates change to 45%, which is like additional rate. Remember that the 20%, 40% and 45% rates apply to non saving income only. Different rate apply to dividend and sometimes to interest. I have another video on the taxation of interest income and the taxation of dividend income so once you go through this one you will have better understanding uh, because in when it's come to interest income there's some allowances with the dividend income there's also some allowances available that's why we keeping them in separate columns here's another example now assume jalal income after deduction and person allowance is thirty thousand four hundred thirty. so which is falling under the basic rate limit so the basic rate limit is 37700 so all you need to do is you need to multiply 30430 by 20% or apply 20% tax rate that would give you income tax liability of 6080 pound now assume jalal has a taxable income after deduction and person allowance of 60000 so now which is more than the basic rate limit so remember the first 30 in this case the first 37700 pound will be taxed at 20% then the remaining gap between 60000 and 37700 um, that will be taxed at 40% rate because that falls in the higher rate band so the one portion falling under the basic rate band tax at 20% and then the remaining part of that 60000 which is 22300 will be taxed at 40%. So the total tax liability is 16,460. Then deduct any income tax already paid by Jalal on PAYE, and the remaining balance will be payable to HMRC by 31st of January 2024. Now assume Jalal's salary is 170,000. So the only source of income and the PAYE deducted is 40,000. So remember, Jalal's salary well in excess of 100,000. We mentioned in the previous slide that an individual net income exceeds 100,000. So for every one pound in excess of 100,000, person allowance reduced by uh, 50 pence. So it means if individual net income exceeds 125,000, he will not be in, entitled to any person allowance. So, based, so now Jalal will not be entitled because based on level of income in exam, Make sure you do not waste time. Just say is because look at his um, income is 170,000. So his salary is well in excess of 100,000. He will not be entitled to person allowance. So in this case, taxable income is 170,000. 
So the first 37,700 um, pound will be taxed at 20%. Then the gap between 150,000 and 37,700, that will be taxed at the rate of 40%. And that the gap between 150,000 and 170,000 will be taxed at the rate of 45%. So make sure uh, once you calculate all uh, the tax liability, make sure you deduct the PAYE deduction because Jalal was on wages. So obviously uh, his employer already deducted PAYE from his salary. Now assume that Jalal has a salary of 110,000. The PAYE deduction is, is 30,000. So solution, so add, as his earning in excess of 100,000, so his personal allowance will be reduced. However, he will be still entitled to some personal allowance. So based on the information given, Jalal personal allowance will be reduced by 5,000 because his income is 10,000 up then 100,000. So this, you divide this 10,000 by two, simple calculation. So, so Jalal will have um, a reduced personal allowance of 7,570 because each individual is entitled for personal allowance of 12,570. So minus 5,000, he's still left with 7,570 allowance. So remember, uh, now the tax liability, so the first 37,700 um, will be taxed at the rate of 20% and that the gap between 102,000 and 37,000 will be taxed at the rate of 40%. So therefore, a Jalal um, tax payable is 33,432. Jalal already paid tax through PAYE 30,000. So the remaining would be payable to HMRC by 31st of January, um, following the end of the tax year. Here's another example. Mr. Smith has employment income of 110,000 with PAY deduction of 30,000 and also won a lottery of 5,000, also received interest of 2,000 on national saving certificate and 3,000 winning on premium bonds, also has a rental income of 16,000. So in exam, just don't make two column, non-saving income and saving income because you saw some saving um, income. Just remember, uh, lottery win is exempt from income tax NSI, any interest you receive on National Saving Certificate is also exempt. So do not include in your calculation. Just make a note that this is exempt. Winning on premium bond is also is an, an exempt income. So that would give you enough marks. You don't have to explain too much. Say so these are the exempt income. So do not include them in your uh, tables or do not do the calculation for those income. Only income subject to income tax are employment income and rental income for Mr. Smith. From the illustration, we can see that Mr. Smith rental income and the wages are subject to income tax. He receives some other income which is not subject to income tax. So do not include in your calculation. If Mr. Smith wouldn't have received rent and his wages would be 110,000, he would be entitled to a reduced personal allowance. Uh, however, including rent, his total income is 126,000. So in this, based on the information, his personal allowance will be reduced by 13,000. However, an individual is only entitled to a personal allowance of 12,570. So in short, he will not be entitled to a personal allowance based on level of income. So the total taxable income he will not be entitled to any personal allowance. So the taxable income will be 126,000. So take 37,700 multiplied by 20% because that falls under the basic rate limit. And then the gap between 37,700 and 126,000 uh, that falls under the higher rate limit, that would be taxed at 40%. Add them up, deduct any tax already paid, any liability left will be due by 31st of January. 2024. Thanks for watching. Some of the things might be complicated. However, if you find it difficult, just read through the slide or you can add me a line or two in the comment box. I would, I'm happy to answer your queries. I have some more videos on taxation of dividend income, taxation of interest income, how to calculate your corporation tax, how to work out your installment for corporation tax, 
that's for the large companies how can you work out any income tax on the car benefit uh, and fuel benefit income tax on living accommodation um, how you can do like that's explain the taxable benefit and there are also videos on exam benefit in the uk this all will be tested in exam and also good to know um, if there are any exemptions so from tax planning point of view um, if you like this video um, please subscribe to my channel i'll be making more videos on um, corporation tax inheritance tax vat capital gain tax financial reporting financial management performance management so this will help the student to pass exam and also good from practical practice uh, point of view if you have the basic understanding if you go to any workplace if you do have the knowledges um, then you can easily excel and your employer would keep you on the job and then you can ask for um, any increase in the pay so the knowledge is power gain the knowledge thanks for watching i'm wishing you a very good day